welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. It's a bright sunny day because we're thinking about 2018 and doing a little recap of all the cool things that happened in 2018. Well, I thought you were going to say it's a bright sunny day because the future looks really bright in 2019. We're going to spend our day talking about how did 2018 go, what can we learn from that, and what are we looking forward to in the year 2019. Well, your future is bright. If you have our Weed of the Week, we're going to show you how to stop this weed on today's program. But first, here's our Farm Basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A 2 plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgrow Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you plus lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about grain bin safety. I can just tell you, growing up on the farm, this is something that our dad talked to us a lot about. Just safety around grain bins, around the augers that you would use to load grain bins, all those types of things. And I, I think about that even today, even though I don't have to anymore run a lot of the augers on our farm, I still, every single hooded sweatshirt I get, I cut the strings off because I just remember somebody who had gotten close to one of those augers when I was a kid and got his string caught in the auger. Well, I, you know, we got to look at all those safety issues on the farm. Well, it seems like such a peaceful place, Brian. You've got this bin that just sits there stationary yep. and it's full of grain and well, there can't be anything wrong with that, but there are certainly some potential issues that you need to be aware of if you're going to go anywhere near a bin. Yeah, so again, this is our farm basics time today, and we kind of gear this around non-farmers. So if you are a non-farmer, we just want you to understand that inside that grain bin, things can go wrong. What usually goes wrong is there's extra moisture that gets on some of the top layer of grain, just as it sits there for many months. And when that happens, then the grain starts to stick together and it forms somewhat of a crust. Well, when the farmer starts taking grain out the bottom, that crust remains at that point, and then there's a hollow space there. So we've actually had some cases in the past where the farmer goes in to kind of bust up any, any issues and he falls right down through stuff. So that's one of the potential problems there can be in a grain bin. Well, when you think about it, how are we going to get the grain out of the bin? And if we're going out of a bottom unload auger, so an auger kind of in the center of the bin, down at the bottom, and all that grain's going to flow through, well, it'll end up being like a cone shape in the bin with the grain. And if you have some of that crusting, like Brian talked about, you may have some issues where all of a sudden a, a chunk of that grain uh, gets down in there and plugs things up. If a farmer goes in to try to fix that so he can keep the grain flowing out of his bin, that can be a real issue. And it's like a lot of things. Oh, wait, stop. What, what do you mean by a real issue? That can be a real issue. How? Well, if you've got an auger that's bringing the grain out of the bin yep. and a farmer goes in there with that auger running, he's taking a lot of risk. So we just want to be real Bye. cautious about that. We want okay. to shut that auger off go in, do what repairs you need to do, and then get back out of the bin okay. before you start yep. back But up. by risk, what we're talking about is the farmer can then sink down just like quicksand in that grain and get pulled down toward that auger. So not that the farmer is going to necessarily go in the auger, but just that the farmer is going to go below the level of the grain so he's completely covered by the grain and now he suffocates. So what farmers will do as they get into these bins is they've got body harnesses and ropes. So if they've got a buddy outside the bin, uh, he can man the rope, the farmer can go in, and if there's any trouble, uh, his buddy can help pull him back out of the bin just to be safe. Or if something happened like that, that he got pulled down in the grain, well, you've got the rope right there. You can see right where he's at, uh, and you can quickly get him back out so he's safe. So this is one of the things, as grain bins have gotten bigger and bigger over the years, we probably get more worried about it than we ever did before. But knowing what we do know today about all the things that can go wrong with grain bins, just putting the grain in the bin, taking the grain out of the bin, we have to be really careful around these things. So we always talk to farmers about make sure you have a buddy whenever you're going into that grain bin. Have somebody that's going to monitor you. And like Darren said, 
use a harness, use ropes, do anything you can to keep yourself safe. And just keep checking that grain bin throughout the season. Make sure the moisture percentage is down so you have good storability uh, and watch out for bugs and those types of things that can get into stored grain. If you do that, if the grain stays in good condition, generally you won't have any issues. Well, one thing you hopefully won't have any issues with is our Weed of the Week. But if you do, we'll talk about how to control it later in the show. Morton is eager to make the building you've always dreamed of a reality. Visit us online at mortonbuildings.com. Ideal for herbicide applications, the Ultra Low Drift's large air inducted droplets were designed to eliminate driftable fines without sacrificing coverage. Its thick three-dimensional pattern creates multiple angles for the spray to cover the target. Hypro, helping you spray better. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry, and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss. You'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. And how about the big man, Pro Germinator? Yeah, this guy's got some experience in the field. But look at his stats. You can't argue with those kind of results. You're right. I know a lot of teams wishing their phosphorus player had those kind of numbers. Right, but this guy's not just phosphorus. He's got the nitrogen, the potassium, the micros. All those just add up to his phosphorus game. And his game is good. Today on the show, we're going to do a little recap of 2018, and then we're going to talk about 2019 and some of the things we're looking forward to when it comes to agronomy. So I just wrote down a few of the things that popped into my head as soon as I started thinking about the year 2018. First of all, like on our farm, wettest year ever. So tile really paid, I mean big time. I also saw where fungicide paid pretty well. We talk about extend, we had fewer issues this year. Trade issues were a big thing in 2018. We had a lot of white mold throughout the northern part of the country, stock rot. There was lots of talk about cutting expenses just because farm commodity prices were not really where we wanted them to be. We saw a new pest gall midge. Seed treatments really seemed to pay this year. And then the Roundup and Lors ban lawsuits that we saw in the summer. So those are the first things that popped into my head. Darren, what do you think about any of those? Or is there something else that really kind of stands out to you in 2018? Well, certainly 2018 was a year that Extend and that whole crop management system in soybeans was gonna get looked at because there were issues in 2017 on quite a few acres and farmers were still excited about going out with the weed control they got out of dicamba uh, using Extend again in 2018. Well, this year there were fewer issues and, and issues were less likely. Uh, partially due to there's a lot more acres of extend out there. So those acres, of course, 
weren't going to have any issues with drift. But the big thing, I think, was farmers really got an understanding of, well, what did it take to keep dicamba in place? How can we best use it? I think some of the things, Brian, revolved around time of day spraying. And then also not just looking at the wind direction at the time of spraying, but looking at the wind direction for a day or even two days after spraying. Yeah, there were certainly some more label restrictions, but you know, I think the biggest thing is just farmers figured out how to use this product at that time of year. So as we think about that and, and what issues we had, you know, a lot of it stemmed from Roundup resistance or just herbicide resistance in general. We saw more water hemp, we saw more palmer pigweed, some of these tough weeds, kochia is another one. They just seemed to get worse this year. Part of it was because of the wet year, part of it was because we're having more resistance issues. So when we take a look at those problems, that really comes to the forefront. When people were going through with harvest and you saw the weeds there, you go, yeah, I wanna make sure that doesn't happen again to me. All right, you mentioned some of the diseases that we saw this year, and certainly each year it's going to vary what we see. Uh, we saw a tar spot happening in northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin, and that problem kind of blew up a little bit more. In fact, it got to such a point that uh, seed companies and agronomists in those areas were just tired of taking questions. They didn't have great answers, uh, but we did see products like Delaro get labeled. Uh, so there are some things that can help. Uh, it may not be perfect out there, but uh, it's certainly going to reduce any problems that you would see. We saw stock rot issues in so many of these areas that were wet in the spring. And we had a lot of snowfall in certain areas in April, uh, which was kind of late. Uh, and then some rain into early May in certain areas. That led to some more stock rot issues. We also saw some extreme heat in the month of May, and that put a lot of stress on those plants as well. So if you had disease issues on your farm in 2018, definitely something to watch for going into 2019. Granted, we're gonna have different weather conditions and different stresses going into the year, but once you have some diseases on your farm, you've gotta be able to uh, manage those things with hybrid selection, variety selection, and certainly with crop protection products. I mentioned the lawsuits out in California with Roundup supposedly causing cancer and Laura's ban just needing to be banned from the market. Well, both those things, in our opinion, are extremely ridiculous. So Roundup has been proven for almost 50 years now to not cause cancer. In fact, Roundup is one of the safest things that we've got in agriculture today. It would take roughly 28 times more glyphosate to kill you than caffeine even, yet people readily drink caffeine. Here's the whole thing. When I talk to a lot of non-farmers, they'll I'll say, hey, yeah, we farm and everything, and they go, well, you don't use Roundup, do you? And I go, well, what's wrong with Roundup? Well, I, Roundup's terrible. People are looking for something to blame. Instead of, you know what, in the United States, we exercise less. We eat much more poorly. We weigh 50 pounds more than we did 50 years ago for, for American men. Uh, all these things have changed. Really with our diet and stress and the things that we're doing to our bodies it has nothing to do with Roundup. If people take Roundup away from farmers, then you know what, all pesticides are gonna be gone. That's the way I look at the thing because Roundup is one of the safest products that we've ever had in agriculture. It works on an enzyme found only in plants. So one of the most important things I think about when I'm thinking the year 2018 is just how we as farmers and as an ag industry are being attacked by non-farmers and people who don't understand what we do and what we're using to provide the safest, healthiest, cheapest and most abundant food supply in the world. It's amazing what the American farmer does. We just have to do a better job telling the story. Well, that's 2018 in a nutshell, and it's kind of a great lead in to 2019. We'll talk about that just in a minute. But first, here's our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. The system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. That early weed control to help combat those weed species is vital. 
I'm excited to see the new spray early bear program, and we've had great success with Extended Max tank mixed with Warrant and Power Max. And for 2019, I'm confident that part of the soybean yield success for our farm next year will include Roundup Ready to Extend. No two seasons are the same. Each brings its own set of challenges, and you've seen a few. So many threats, and not one single thing can be taken for granted. In the fight against the unpredictable, the Acceleron portfolio provides coverage on four fronts. Fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers. Rise stronger with one simple decision. College students often get the short end of the stock when it comes to paying for an education. I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD, and if you seek a career in agriculture, I have great news. My brother Brian and I are hosting our first ever collegiate agronomy workshop. In addition to agricultural information, we provide you the chance to walk away with a college scholarship. The best part? Attendance is free. The workshop is on Thursday, January 3rd at the Morton Center in Baltic, South Dakota. For more information and to register, go to agphd.com. The buzz on this line is probably the best in 10 years, both in soil and in the plant. Joe, you've been doing this for a while. What's your take? Well, Don, you take a player like high energy in, three forms of nitrogen, plus sulfur and iron, with slow release technology, he's making plays all season long. Oh, look at his numbers. He's getting it done. But don't forget about in response. This guy's designed for a quick release nitrogen. It's looking like another championship season for Agro Liquid. As we talk about 2019, here's just a quick list of some of the things I'm thinking about. When we start talking about corn, I think, you know what, there might be more acres of corn, at least that's what it looks like today, which means there's probably more need for traits like smart stacks. It's going to be cheap HPPD, meaning we'll probably have more carryover, more resistance. We've got new aphid products like Safina and Transform. Wheat, I, I think about that. We got to have more pre-emerge use to stop tough weeds like kochia. There's also stripe rust and other insects out there. Hopefully in soybeans we get enlist. But unfortunately, we've also gotten water hemp and palmer pigweed. So we got to take a look at that. And the last couple of things for 2019 on my list were make sure you're running trials on your farm and make sure you are telling the story of agriculture. I'm going to start with the trials there, Brian, because as we're moving into a new age of farming, we've got great digital tools. All we have to do is keep track of where we put things, and you can just plug it right into a lot of the programs that you're using on the farm. It's never been easier to do trial work on your own, on your own farm, track it all the way through the season, even using daily satellite imagery to see how those differences shake out throughout the season. It was really fun this fall harvesting and, and seeing how some of the trials turned out, I would strongly encourage you to do those trials on your farm too. We're seeing more soybean aphid resistance, so the big thing I wanted to talk about on my list was Safina and Transform. Safina is the new BSF product, different mode of action than Transform, but they're very, very similar products. They're gonna kill aphids, a couple other insects, that's about it and pretty easy on the beneficials. So these are great products if you are worried about aphid resistance on your farm. I'm more worried about weed resistance, Brian. You mentioned a couple of the tough resistant weeds that we've got and getting a new tool labeled. I'm excited about the Enlist crop system and, and that getting approval hopefully going forward on a wide scale across the country in soybeans. That way we can start using not only the new 240 choline, but also Liberty at the same time. You look at any of the weed control programs we have for soybeans, they have one effective mode of action going out in a single spray. We need to have at least two. When we talk about multiple modes of action, I think a lot about corn. The HVPDs now are so cheap, we're just really worried about overuse of them, which is going to lead to more carryover and more resistance problems than we've seen in the past. And we have seen both of those things in the past. So we want you to use HVPDs, they're cheap. Going into 2019, we will absolutely use them on our farm, but we're going to throw them with at least a couple other modes of action. That's going to basically safen that whole program so I don't have to use a super high rate, I don't have to worry about carryover, and I'm not as worried about weed resistance developing. One other thing for 2019, there have been a lot of changes in the seed treatment industry and there are new products that are coming out uh, that are working better, both microbial products and chemistry type products to control certain diseases. So take a look at that with the seed that you're ordering here for 2019 season. 
and look at what those seed treatments are. Investigate what each of the components does because there's a broad range of new products and a wide difference between seed companies and what they're offering. Even though commodity prices probably aren't where you want them today and you know, let's face it, are they ever gonna get to where you really want them? Here, here's the point. I don't care what commodity prices are. I do care about what I can control on my farm. Now, don't get me wrong, I'd love to have better commodity prices for me, but I'm simply saying we always need to take a look at return on investment and make the best decisions we possibly can on our farm because we're still the ones in control on our farm. We still can have a good year in 2019 if we manage things really well. Obviously, if margins are squeezed, we gotta get to be as good a managers as we possibly can be to do well. But I am saying I'm excited about 2019. I think there's a lot of potential. Depending on how we do on all our trade issues and everything else as a country, I think 2019 can have better prices. I know we can do a better job with yields as we continue to get smarter and have better genetics, better traits, better crop protection products. I just think this is an exciting time to be involved in agriculture. We're super excited going into 2019, and one of the things that we can do a really good job at is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do that coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? Our Weed of the Week is lead plant. Now, before we go any further, I just wanna say this. There are a lot of people that are going to use lead plant as, a, as something they view as a positive. You, it can be used for erosion control, it produces nitrogen, it actually can be a really good plant. But I just want you to think about this. We talk on the show about how to kill corn. We also talk about how to raise great corn. Same thing with soybeans, same thing with wheat, same thing with any crop out there, even lead plant can be bad for the crop I'm trying to raise if it's in the crop I'm trying to raise. We want to raise lead plant where we're going to produce lead plant, where I'm going to raise corn or beans or wheat or some other crop, pasture, I just want to raise that. All right, so if there's one lead plant that's growing in the wrong spot, dig it up, move it where you want it. If there's lots of them, we can use herbicides to get them under control in that particular area, but it's not one of those weeds that takes over and becomes a big problem more times usually. than not. Yeah, usually, but it's a perennial, it's a shrub, it is not the easiest thing to control. I can't just go throw a little Roundup on it or a tiny rate of 2,4-D and expect to get control. When it comes to weed control with lead plant, if it's out into a cultivated field, it's a, it's a perennial weed, you can use a really high dose of Roundup and do okay on it. But if you're in non-crop areas, that's normally where we see this and you really don't want lead plant around for some reason, Chaparral has been pretty effective at taking it out. Yeah, I would say though, in the cultivated fields, Roundup is not that great. I'd rather see you use, if you could, dicamba, 2,4-D, something like that. But the biggest thing is just get good crop canopy, and a lot of times that'll choke it out. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's Weed of the Week, Lead Plant. But Iron Talk is coming up next. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. 
Titan Machinery's team of Case IH factory trained service technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. Morton is eager to make the building you've always dreamed of a reality. Visit us online at mortonbuildings.com. No two seasons are the same. Each brings its own set of challenges, and you've seen a few. So many threats, and not one single thing can be taken for granted. In the fight against the unpredictable, the Acceleron portfolio provides coverage on four fronts. Fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers. Rise stronger with one simple decision. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Twenty nineteen is going to be interesting. Whether you're going to continuous corn, switching away from corn hybrid traits to save money, or just want to use dry insecticide due to insect resistance to BT traits, we'll discuss an option that you should consider in today's Iron Talk. Back in the day when the lion's share of new corn planters came with dry boxes for fertilizer or insecticide, there was no need for an alternative system. Many of the products that were being used were at close to 10 pound per acre rates and could be applied accurately enough using a conventional pulley and chain metering system. Today, things are different. Most farmers have given up the dry insecticide boxes in favor of three bushel seed boxes or large central fill systems. If you'd like to apply a dry insecticide, chances are you're looking at adding a smart box system to your existing planter. Smart box systems have some big advantages over the old ways of applying insecticide. First, AMVAC, the company that markets smart box insecticides, has a program to help pay a portion of the cost of the system if you purchase smart box insecticides. Second, putting the insecticides in smart boxes eliminates much of your exposure risk to the insecticide you're using. Third, the smart box system has a more accurate system for metering low rates of insecticides. Some of the new ones now are really concentrated, especially compared to the older products that we used to use. Depending on the product that you choose, you may be able to load new smart boxes on your planter just once in the morning and plant all day long. If you want to use dry insecticides this year, a smart box system is something you should check into. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, I want to invite you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. You can go to agphdinsider.com to learn more. This is our new magazine we launched here in 2018 to give you more great agronomic information. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll be back next week with another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.